Hello and welcome. I'm Saeed from StoryPlanet.net. Dive right into the essence of the most captivating books without reading them cover to cover. Whether you're on the go, at the gym, or just relaxing at home, we offer you a unique and enriching listening experience. Today, we are exploring the book, How the Mighty Fall, a creation by Jim Collins. In How the Mighty Fall, Jim Collins delves into how prosperous companies can fail abruptly due to poor decisions, providing leaders with guidance to avoid similar missteps. Before we delve into these revelations, it's interesting to note that Jim Collins, a renowned author and business expert, has penned successful books such as Good to Great and Built to Last. He writes for Harvard Business Review, Fortune and Business Week, and provides counsel to leaders in both social and corporate domains. With eight key ideas to unveil, brace yourself for a deep dive into this captivating book. On StoryPlane.net To start, the text discusses how businesses recover from decline and the benefits of this process. The text discusses why successful companies like Nokia and Kodak fail, attributing it to poor leadership rather than external factors. The book, How the Meaty Fall, argues that mismanagement by leaders leads to the downfall of these companies. It is based on extensive research and focuses on the qualities that successful businesses should have in their leadership. Key idea number one. All companies and institutions are susceptible to decline regardless of their size or success. The text discusses the rise and fall of the Roman Empire and draws parallels to modern-day business examples, such as Nokia and Bank of America. It highlights that the decline of large entities is often self-inflicted due to mismanagement rather than external factors. The examples of Nokia and Bank of America illustrate how innovation and energy alone are not enough to prevent collapse if management decisions are not strategic. Key idea number two. Successful companies may become arrogant and fall victim to hubris. Greek tragedies often feature heroes who fail due to hubris and excess of confidence. Similarly, successful companies like Motorola and Circuit City can also succumb to overconfidence leading to costly mistakes. Motorola's insistence on the outdated StarTac phone, despite industry changes, caused a significant drop in market share. Circuit City's neglect of its core consumer electronics business in pursuit of other ventures ultimately led to the company's downfall. Key idea number three, chasing unsustainable innovation and growth levels can cause companies to lose their focus. Many successful companies fail not due to laziness, but because they strive to be overly innovative and grow too quickly, neglecting fundamental business practices. Rubbermaid excelled in innovation, but lost control of costs by introducing too many products too quickly, leading to a decline. Some companies aim to grow too fast to meet shareholder expectations, which can result in unsustainable practices and eventually lead to major losses as seen in the 2008 financial crisis. Key idea number four. Companies often neglect or shift blame when initial signs of deterioration become apparent. Ignoring valid criticism can lead to significant Mr. Keys for companies as seen in the example of Motorola's failed satellite phone project, Iridium. Instead of addressing shortcomings, companies may choose to ignore criticism or shift blame externally. To succeed, businesses should embrace criticism constructively and make necessary changes based on feedback rather than sticking to flawed beliefs or practices. Key idea number five. Companies often respond to crises by either making bold, risky changes or by deciding to abandon their efforts altogether. Business leaders often respond to crises with panic and hurried decisions, seeking a silver bullet solution for all problems. Attempting radical changes, like implementing new technology or overhauling business culture, rarely leads to sustained growth and can even worsen the situation. Hewlett Packard's experience in the 1990s with sweeping changes, including a new CEO and image overhaul, resulted in decline and eventual firing of the CEO. In some cases, companies may need to accept decline and give up, as seen with Scott Paper, which ultimately resulted in massive job cuts and acquisition by a rival company. 
Key idea number six, focus on improving your attitude to prevent self-inflicted decline. Leaders need the right attitude to make good decisions. They should acknowledge luck in their success to avoid arrogance. Being open to learning and staying humble are essential traits for successful leaders, exemplified by Sam Walton. Keeping focus on their core business helps prevent overreaching, as seen in the case of Circuit City. Key idea number seven, stay calm and composed when facing challenges instead of resorting to high-risk actions. Business leaders must consider taking risks, especially during tough times. While risky strategies are acceptable, it's crucial to assess potential consequences. The waterline principle highlights the importance of taking risks that can be repaired if they fail. Avoid dangerous risks that could sink the boat. Sweeping changes to business strategies should be avoided, as small manageable risks are preferable. The key is to build upon successful risks rather than making extensive alterations that could lead to instability. Key idea number eight. Companies can bounce back with determination and willpower. In times of crisis, giving up may seem like the only option for individuals and companies. However, with the right attitude and hard work, it is possible to turn things around. Believing in oneself, like Winston Churchill did despite adversity, is crucial. Additionally, dedication and relentless effort, exemplified by Anne Mulkey's leadership at Xerox, can lead to remarkable recoveries even in the face of significant challenges. In conclusion, the key message is that any company can experience failure and decline aggravated by panic-driven actions. Leaders should stick to good business practices, remain calm and focus on the company's strengths. Actionable advice includes taking small steps towards goals for higher chances of success, taking responsibility for failures, and solving problems independently. Thank you for listening to this summary. If you enjoyed this exploration, we invite you to discover other fascinating books on StoryPlanet.net. Don't wait any longer. A multitude of books, stories, and knowledge await you there. See you soon on StoryPlanet.net.